Gigabyte. Hello everyone, <laughs> Mr. Rim here, <laughs> bringing you today N9 versus First Departure in this fifth round of the group stages of GEST. So your ass is mine is in fact N9 and Mavis is in fact First Departure. First Departure, if I remember well, they are the um, team. There's the there, there's the team who won the Philippines qualifiers. I'm just gonna check it. Nope. I was wrong, it's Singapore qualifiers, so they're the one who won the uh, Singapore qualifiers, and N9 is the old AL, The uh, you, you may remember uh, Godot, Shatan, they're all from uh, AL, when the AL was still a Australian team, so they are joined with uh, Winter and Risk as well as FZ, Winter I think is one of the player of I'm not really sure, so I'm not gonna go ahead and talk shit. So it's gonna be first ban for first departure, Batrider ban as well as a TA ban, and N9 are gonna go ahead and ban the Darkseer. This really, this guy, we never see him in any game, just because he's so annoying. The vacuum, the wall, the... I still remember the time where the um, Scepter allowed your allies to pop illusions as well. And then any caster would just throw their hand in the air and say, Okay, so this team fight is over. I can't say anything. Nagy Siren is going to be the first pick for first departure. So Nagy Siren. This, uh, this hero, why is she often banned? Is not that she's super, super strong as a carry. It's just because of the fact that her ultimate is so annoying. It's a reset button. Anything goes wrong, use the ultimate. 60 second at level 60 second cooldown at level um, 16. You can use it to run away. You can use it to to uh, just delay your enemies, delay the push. You can use it to make sure that uh, you get the positioning right, and you get it to see also you can use it to get the jump on your enemy. So Naga Siren very often picked with the uh, the uh, Enigma. So we're gonna have to see if um, N9 is gonna deny the Enigma from the uh, first departure side. Might not be the case. And Naga Siren in the late game, you might you might be wondering if she's a good carry. Well, she holds her ground. Uh, with the Illusion, she really deals a lot of damage. And it's going to be Tidehunter picked right away by N9. Uh, Tidehunter and Queen of Pain by N9 or so. So Tidehunter is one of those good heroes against the Naga Siren due to the fact that when the Naga Siren ultimate uh, ends, you can just spam your ultimate button. And that means if the Naga Siren and her team try to do some kind of weird trick on you, but basically use the sleep and wrap around your team to to throw their spells. Well, if you're too close, the Titan just ravage and everyone gets caught in the ravage as well. Jakiro is going to be the pick for first departure, which is not really surprising. Jakiro is one of those new hero. I speak I'm not. Can't, I can't really say new hero. It's one of those hero who, with the new buffs that he received. Is really really strong, and with the Naga Siren, she will he will be able to use the the use the sleep, position the Jakiro well, use the Macro Pyre, and end the sleep, and end the sleep with also the Ice Path. So that is 2.2 seconds of guaranteed uh, as in the fire of the Macro Pyre, and the Macro Pyre really deals a lot of damage as well. It's 100 damage per second at level six, so it's a potential of 700 damage AOE that comes. And uh, well, it doesn't increase by a whole lot in the uh, in later stages of the game, but it's still quite something. And it's only 60 second cooldown, so you can use it quite often. And Shadow Fiend so early by N9, this is really surprising. I'm Shadow Fiend is one of those heroes who's almost never banned and rarely picked. Even with the new buffs, he's not like often picked. We see him as a last pick or as a fourth pick, but here we see we see him in the first set of picks, and this is really surprising to me. Shadowfin again, uh, we see him much more often now in the safe lane due to the fact that he is, um, as I said before, very vulnerable to ganks. And you just saw how hard the Shadowfin just once he gets get uh, once he gets ganked once, he just die over and over again. Every time he's getting even more easy to kill the Shadowfin, and uh, we'll have to see what it how it goes. So. Potentially, we might have a Queen of Pain in the middle lane, and I mean, uh, a Shadow Fiend in the middle lane, and Queen of Pain in the long lane. But I'm more 
I'm more inclined toward belie towards believing that the Queen of Pain is going to be in the middle, and Shadow Fiend is going to get supported by two other supports. So either Tide Hunter plus one or two other supports, and Tide Hunter is going to be on the long lane. Naga Siren, she's going to probably get uh, supported by Jakiro and one other. Nature Prophet might be either in the solo lane, in middle lane or on the long lane. He could also potentially jungle, but it's, that's almost never the case anymore. So the Lone Druid is banned now for uh, first departure. So the Lone Druid ban is denying <coughs> sorry N9 from a long lane solo that deals a lot of damage as well with the bear. This Radiance bear really hurting a lot, any kind of support. And Enigma is going to be the ban for N9, so if you don't pick an Enigma, better not give it to the team with the Naga Siren. And in fact, Broodmother now banned by first departure, so they're shutting down the long lane heroes that N9 might, N9 might pick. So either they're going to force Titan to go in the long lane, or they're going to re restrict at least any kind of uh, strange hero on the long lane, so it's just going to be maybe a... A uh, Windrunner or a Puck. We see a lot of Puck in this tournament, which is not often the, the not often the case. And no, now the ban for N9 side. Very nicely named. Your ass is mine. And Undying now banned by N9. So Undying, we just saw how powerful it could be in the last game. And Disruptor ban by first departure. Disruptor. Disruptor, one of the supports who doesn't see a whole lot of play. He's played more often than before, but he's still not in the you know first pick first ban set of scenario. So he he's not as good as like for example Jakiro at the moment. Like everyone picks Jakiro due to his new buffs, but Disruptor with the glimpse is one of the most devastating spell ever, and he also has this um, static cloud, as uh, static storm which silence any enemy under this static storm for 5 seconds so it's it's uh, it's preventing Nagasaren for you from using the uh, sleep for 5 seconds if she stays under the uh, under the cloud and night stalker now picked by first departure so aggressive play coming in Jakiro, night stalker as well as nature prophet uh, nature prophet can just tp in anywhere night stalker finds a prey to make it 2 versus 1 and to make sure that they get the kill very quickly and Jakiro also can support the uh, Night Stalker from pretty much afar with the Ice Path, basically hiding himself. And Night Stalker goes in. Jakiro follows up with the Ice Path from afar. And for the uh, Radiant, uh, for for the Dark Side, it's gonna be a Keeper of the Light ban. So, Five seconds remaining. So Keeper of the Light, one of these heroes who I didn't really think he would go into the uh, current meta game, but. He did get a lot of play recently on the, on some teams. It's one of the ultimate Trilin hero. He, it gives your other heroes on the lane infinite amount of mana, and the just the harassment coming from the Illumina is just so powerful. It has a huge range, huge AOE. It denies a lot of space. So either you get to eat the Illuminate in the face, or you lose a lot of experience from walking away from the creeps. So now 30, 30 seconds left, 4 and 9, and they're going to go ahead and pick the Bounty Hunter. So again a Bounty Hunter, we saw Bounty Hunter in every, or every game so far. Bounty Hunter, a lot of damage output, a good burst potential, and also a lot of gold coming potentially. But I'm not so sure about this Bounty Hunter pick this time, because, well, Queen of Pain, Bounty Hunter, they can gank. Tide Hunter is... Pretty much limited by his mobility, he'll have to walk around and Shadow Fiend usually well he has a lot of early damage output, but do you we do we really want to commit a Shadow Fiend walking around and getting kills instead of farm? Where we when we know that Shadow Fiend can just farm so quickly? And we saw in the game of uh, Flash versus Dusk Fiend where HYHY playing uh, under the name of I don't know had just so many items at the end he would just deal one thousand six hundred damage in one crit and that would just one shot the poor, uh, you know, the the poor Earthshaker who was walking around, and also the poor Robic. So basically, one hit, and goodbye any support. Remember that Shadow Fiend also works pretty well with other uh, carry heroes, 
uh, because of the uh, minus six armor that he um, that he has as aura, which is going to amplify any kind of damage coming from, for example, bounty hunter. And bounty hunter with the minus six armor plus the um, Junada crit, Lishrak is going to be the last support hero for first departure, which is not really um, a surprise. Again, uh, Lishrak always a good support hero that goes well into almost any composition. And I would say Bounty Hunter, the track is going to reduce 135 armor, the Gush is going to reduce 2345 armor, and the, R the uh, Aura is going to reduce 6. And that's a whole lot of minus armor. So they will be able to bring down any kind of hero very quickly, except maybe the Nagasarin who has a lot of armor. I think he, she starts with 6 armor, 6 base armor, which is insane. We'll have to see if. Uh, that got nerfed too, or I'm not really sure, I don't really remember. I do remember the 6.75 patch, she got nerfed by 14 agility. Oh, not 14, not agility, 14 base damage. So this at least nerfed her a bit. And... Well, they're not going to go for a huge wombo combos with the Nagasarin. Venomancer is going to be the uh, two-go support. Let's try Venomancer, two supports that we always see, almost all the time. It's gonna be Miracle on the Nagasari, Infatuated on the Jakiro, P on the Nature Prophet, Polo Sun on the Night Soccer, Luby on the Lushrak, and remember Luby. I mean, I at least will always remember Luby on his Earthshaker. I was really blown away by his ability to chain the stuns perfectly. Every time I thought the the uh, the um. I mean, every time I, I thought the uh, the anti mage from Mistress was able to, gonna be able to run away. Nope, he's just goes there, walked and slammed the totem at the right time and he got the stun, so I'm gonna have to look out for his uh, his uh, Lishrike as well and uh, well, no, it's gonna be 5 armor on Naga Siren, so not 6 anymore on the N9 side it's gonna be FZ on Queen of Pain, Risk on Bunny Hunter, Shatan on the Shadow Fiend, Winter on the Venomancer and Godot on the Tide Hunter and they're all heading to the top lane, so at the moment they're defending the top lane for the uh, Radiant side, I as I was saying before, I'm surprised. Usually when we see the Nagasarin, we see the big Wombo combos, like I'm gonna get an Enigma, I'm gonna get a Tidehunter, I'm gonna get a, I don't know, like a Lishrak or the um, Rubik, and um, and all also Venomancer with the AoE ultimate. Instead, they go for Lishrak, who has a lot of AoE damage, the Jakiro, but also Night nice Soccer and Nature Prophet, who don't really bring a whole lot to the table when it comes to the big team fights, Nature Prophet is not so good in the early game for the team fights. He's okay to gank with the uh, no TP into the Sprout, but except from this in the team fights, he can just right click, and that's pretty much all. And same with the Night Soccer, he's very good to take down one hero at a time with the Void, so it slows the enemy, that slows his attack speed, that deals damage, that pretty much is, does everything, and the silence. So the silence is still useful in the team fight. don't get me wrong, but compared to compared to what the, his ability to gank, his ability to teamfight is pretty weak. So Haste Rune is going to get picked by Winter, the Trents won't be able to deny this, and well, the Trents are walking up to their doom, they're going to try to, they're going to try to, uh, to pull these creeps, but uh, nope, they're going to get slowed, and that is one first soul for Shadow Fiend. So one free soul for Seraphine, and it's going to be Winter as well as Godot supporting this uh, Shatan here. On the bottom lane, it's going to be Risk on the solo long lane against the trial lane, which is going to be Nagasarin, Luby, and Jakiro, which is going to be hyper hard, because Bounty Hunter, the net, reveals the invisible hero. That is the problem. If you land the net before he goes invisible, if you go invisible after this, you're still visible. And Nature Prophet on the other side, he's trying his best to get these... Uh, Creeps to follow the trends. But will he be able to do so? Godot blocking the trends. And he's still pulling them away. Winter is going to do a very good job here. By doing this, what happened is, since the Centaur attacked the Venomancer, that is, one hero is getting atta attacked, and the, that means the uh, creeps are getting the uh, higher priority on the uh, any unit that is damaging your hero. So instead of doing this, all the creeps are gonna get pulled. And that is even less gold and less experience for Nature Prophet, who is still sitting at level 1. 
In the middle lane, we have Nash Soaker against the Queen of Pain. And Queen of Pain have the upper hand in this exchange. The thing is, the Nash Soaker is a timing hero who requires some amount of farm, some amount of levels at low to, uh, the, for the 6 minute mark. And when the 6 minute mark hits, it's the time of the gank, it's, uh, it's night time. 6 minutes is the night time and it's also the gank time. And that's when Night Soaker is showing if he's going to be useful or not. Risk also with zero experience on the bottom lane, so both lane are having a really hard time. And P is going to do the wise choice, going into the jungle. He knows he can't do anything on the top lane, so instead of just standing there and doing nothing, he's going to just jungle. The problem is Risk cannot do the same thing. He, as a bounty hunter, you can't really support, you can't really jungle. He's gonna head into the mid lane, and yeah, he's just walking around at that point. Using the invisibility, they might look for a pickoff on the Night Stalker, which might be very hard because Night Stalker is pretty tanky in in the uh, like. A, he's in, inherently pretty tanky, so yeah, Venomancer is gonna walk away, and Godot is still pulling this uh, center can. He's gonna get stunned by it. In the middle lane, we have Risk still leeching a bit of experience. So both those uh, lanes getting absolutely denied horribly. And this time, I remember the overlay three minutes in, so still not very, very good, but <laughs> it's getting there. Nature Prophet still jungling. He's up to level two. Risk at last might get some few creep kills, or at least some experience. Still has to be careful though, because if the net lands with the uh, Riptide and the Ice Path as well as the Lushrak stun, that might be a very dead risk. So already dealing a bit of damage to the tower. Risk is just, just sitting into the uh, experience range. Miracle leveling one level into Mirror Image, pulling the creeps away. A lot of damage taken by this tower. Now 24 for 9 for the... Uh, oh, the tower is going to go down very, very likely. And one right click. No one's going to get it. In fact, it's going to be the Radiant who gets the tower. In the top tower, in the top lane, they are doing the same here. And N9 is, the answer, is uh, returning the favor. But uh, it looks like first departure, they, they're not going to stop here, they're going to go on this tower. And they're... oh! Oh no! Oh no, P, what are you doing here? Yeah, time to feed, as you say. And Jakiro actually getting a kill on Bounty Hunter as well, so... One kill on each side. The Sentry Ward got planted down, and uh, P is even coming in to push down this lane as well. The strike disconnected. Hopefully this time it won't be a 10 minute pose. So Shadow Fiend now with Ring of Cola and 1k gold. Boots as well. Godot with Boots and 800 gold. This Tidehunter, this support Tidehunter is so rich at this point. So he's going to be able to get an Arcane Boots if he wants to. And getting an early Arcane Boots is very very good uh, uh, for the Shadow Fiend as well. Because uh, you'll be able to give him a lot of mana. So he'll be able to farm with a raise. And Venomancer, Winter, is probably going to look to get those uh, boots. So the Shrek reconnected to the game. Nice Stalker in the mid lane. He has the invisibility rune. He can't really do much. He is going for the uh, power trades as fast as possible. So Luby's back. Be. And they're going to look to take this tower. There's no defense coming in from the dire side. So, so two towers going down. And for N9, they're gonna go also on this uh, top tower, tier 2 tower. So, trading towers for towers. Risk is still here. There's the Sentry Ward, <laughs> has to be careful. Oh, there's only uh, Naga Siren here now. So, Risk should be pretty much okay to just try to get some creep kills. In fact, he misses this, so. P is here, there's a second TP coming in. And it's the uh, Jakiro. So Jakiro is going to push them back a bit. And here goes the Ice Path. Got out taking a lot of damage from all this. And the Shrek coming in as well. So they're getting the advantage by pushing the tower faster and being able to go back to defend. 
in the middle lane, Hall of Sun is coming back, and Queen of Pain is taking a bit of damage. Now we see the Naga Siren walking around with the illusions, he has the arcade boots. We're leveling up the rip type to maximum. Risk has the boots now. And FZ is gonna look for the top tower uh, the top rune. Is he gonna get it? Nope, it's gonna be on the bomb lane. Paulson looks like he doesn't care, he's just farming. And there goes the knight, so Night Stalker, we have to see what he decides to go for. He did get one level into silence, which is very very smart against someone like Queen of Pain. You don't want her to blink away. And well he does ping once for winter. Here's the fake TP. It's not gonna happen. Godot is around here as well. And he has the arcane boots if he wants to buy them. So he's gonna back off. He has no mana and no health. Shatan level 6. He has the uh, power traits. Fake TP again. Paul Sun in the mid lane with the Jakiro. So risk on the bottom lane now, 2 level and shuri toss as well as 2 level and shadow walk. 2 level and shuri toss is pretty much standard for bounty hunter builds. Due to the weird way this scales, oh in the middle lane we see Gen coming on, on the Queen of Pain. This one is not going to be a fake TP and Queen of Pain is going to be able to blink away and Nightstalker is actually not diving this. He knows that there is still Venom Hunter around, he knows that bounty hunter is coming around. And I must say, Nature Prophet, I'm not even sure, I thought the Sprout might have saved the Queen of Pain because because of the Sprout he couldn't get inside and land one or two more right clicks. Risk now looking for a kill in the middle lane and those are four heroes coming on the Night Sucker. He's slow to crawl, he's trying to run, run away. There is the ultimate, is there an ultimate? No, he's not gonna use it. Ice Path is gonna come to uh, support the poor Night Sucker. Night Sucker is going to be able to run away with this. Night Sucker is very, very tanky. 1.1k, no, 1k goal, 1k health with the power trace to uh, to uh, strength. And compared to all other heroes, he he is the he has the best chance to to uh, survive the burst coming from the Queen of Pain and the um, and of the Bounty Hunter. Bounty Hunter level five, and he's still not level six. He wants this track. Once he gets the track, he will start to get bonus gold. Winter is going to get caught, but Winter, I don't, I'm not really sure Winter will be able to. Well, actually, yes, he will be able to walk away. And Nightstalker, even afraid, he's gonna TP out. 400 health, yeah, with the Queen of Pain, with the ultimate, she might have been able to bring him down. In fact, Jakiro has to be careful. A blink and a scream into a uh, ultimate will kill him, but she doesn't have enough mana for this, so nope, never mind, she's not gonna do this. And the tower can be denied here, so are they gonna deny it? I'm pretty sure they will. Except if they want to bait someone to go and try to get it. Blink coming in. A uh, ping coming in, I mean Night Stalker is not gonna be able to silence her before she walks away. TP coming in as well. So Winter is here to make sure that Queen of Pain is not alone against all this. There's the Sentry Ward, plan it down. So they don't want any kind of invisibility, shenanigans, smoke or anything. The Shrek is here as well as Jakiro, they're all biding their time. On the bottom lane, Nagasarin is still farming up, she's at 45 creep kills, but so is Shatan with the 60 creep kills. He's going straight for a BKB, and... Well, what are those pings for? Smoke coming in, and they want to do something, they want to be aggressive. It's already half of the night time spent, and Nightstalker still is 0 0 0, so... This is not something you want with Nightstalker, they're trying to find someone, they're not finding anyone in this... In this top lane though, they might be able to get the Shadow Fiend after a while. And yeah, they're gonna go on Nature Prophet. TP coming in, the Risk is trying to get the kill. And Bounty Hunter will not be able to run away, will not be able to get the kill. And now Shatan is also in a lot of trouble. He might look to do some, well, he's gonna dodge this stun, but Nasogre comes in and goodbye Shatan. Shatan not even having the ultimate yet, he went for... Yeah, the max level in Necromastery, that max level in the Shadow Race. He doesn't want a team fight yet, so yeah, no reason to level the uh, Brickium of Souls at this moment. And they're gonna dive on Winter. So Sprout, and now they're gonna get the uh, <laughs> Venom is gonna fall immediately. They're still waiting for TPs. They're like, yep, you can come in. Silence, but uh, Bonnie Hunter is able to use the Shadow Walk right before this. And now First Departure looking to get this tower. 
Risk still roaming around. Is there any sentry wars? So track coming down. Nature Prophet has the mechanism now. The Godot wants to get this Ravage. The sleeve is gonna come up, and that means everyone's gonna be able to run away just fine. And that is what I meant by you get a reset button with the Nagasarin. Get out of jail for a free card. So now she won't have it for 180 seconds. Jakiro is posing the game. Apparently, again, another small technical problem. So we're going to go over the items at this time. Nature Prophet, as I said before, he had managed to get the mechanism. It, it, 10 minutes in, mechanism is very, very good. 250, go, uh, 250 heal for everyone is a lot. It's enormous in the early game. So he's going to be very happy with this. Nagasarin has the arcane boost as well, 2.2k gold. So she might go for... We saw some Nagasarin going for the heart first. If they're feeling really pressured. I'm not really sure that's what Nagasarin here wants to, uh, wants to get. But um, I'm really... Yeah, I'm really not sure about what she wants to go for. So we're gonna have to look out for this. Polosan, this uh, nice stalker, got the um, Urn of Shadow flying up to him. And the uh, the Shrek doesn't have much, but um, he's the support of the Shrek, so heh, he's not support so farm a lot. Lushikira is the same. He has 500 gold in the bank, though. And same for the Shrek, he has 700 gold. So Venomancer has nothing new. Tidehunter has the Arcane Boots, as I said before. Bounty Hunter, he has boots as well. as Does he have anything else on the courier? Nope. Uh, Shadow Fiend has the BKB coming up once he, well, he's working on the BKB, he's, he doesn't have the BKB coming up. So he has the Orca Club at least, and he's wanting to get this um, fast, you know, uh, inv invulnerability to spells. Queen of Pain is pretty much with, yeah, no Talisman, Magic Wand, and Power Tread, so nothing really big here. And if we take a look at the experience graph, it's pretty much even at that point. And Gold Graph is, yeah, 1.5k gold Adventure for the Radiant. 11 minutes in, that's like 10%. So it's not a whole lot. It's it's not something to scoff at, but it's not a whole lot. It's the equivalent of three bracers. So, what else do we have here? As far as build goes, Jakiro have the Dual Breath Level 1, Ice Path Level 3, 1 point in Liquid Fire, 1 point in Macropire, which is pretty much standard. You want to max the Ice Path first in this version, because the Ice Path is still good. And the Liquid Fire really helps while taking down towers. It's also damage that you take, uh, that you give without uh, having to use any mana. And Dual Breath is not, you know, that good of a spell. It slows the same amount for the same duration across all levels. It only increases in damage. So, if you're just here for the support Jack Hero, you know that you won't be able to deal a lot of damage. You're really here to support your allies with an Ice Path. And the slow if you need, but it's less about the damage than the slow, it's more about the control. The Morocco Power, of course, is a good damage uh, damage source, so always take it. And uh, So TH, uh, Twin Head Dragon have a problem. Split Earth and Double Edic and the Shrek, so this is the pushing build, as we see. As we, as we saw here and here, they just took down the towers. Uh, Nature Prophet maxing up the teleportation as well as Nature Call. And Nagasarin going for the Max Riptide into the Mirror Image, and not the Ensnare, so... Um, I guess she thinks 2 seconds is enough. Same for Night Soccer, getting only 1 level in Silence, and 3 levels into the uh, Hunter of the Night. So 1 level in Silence is usually enough in the early games, it's only increasing the duration by 1 second e uh, each time. Whereas the Hunter in the Night increases your move speed by 5% each time, also the attack speed by 15, which is a lot. Especially in the early game where, we, where the supports don't have a lot of HP. You just, uh, you know, claw them five times in the face and just, just fall. So... I'm sorry, wait a second. Checking if the admins have something to say. So, nope. It's alright. Alright, so... At this point into the game, if we take a look at the teamfight values, as I said before, Naga Siren. She has a very good setup for the team fight, but Jakiro and Lashrak are pretty much the two only others to have AoEs. Well, you have the Nature Prophet Ultimate, but it doesn't deal a whole lot of damage, and also it bounces pretty much randomly. I mean, not really randomly, but it's it's not something like a Earthshaker Ultimate or a Sand King Ultimate. It's it's the uh, it's the Nature Prophet's Ultimate, so it deals a good amount of damage, but it's not going to be a game changing st uh, thing compared to if you had a Sand King. Now, on the other side, we have Venomancer with the Poison Nova, which deal 
an enormous amount of damage. Like I said in the uh, other games that I casted with the Venomancer, at level 16, this is potentially 1,000 and... 1,000, I think. Um, sorry, I'm trying to do the math, but my brain is farting. So, 1,300 damage coming up for the... Uh, 1,300 damage on everyone who is caught in the ultimate, which is insane. I mean, the damage is insane, but it's just that since it's over time, people tend to not really uh, remember it. So, Tidehunter's ultimate as well, the Ravage, and the Queen of Pain ultimate, those three have a lot of damage potential coming out of there. And with the Shadow Fiend, again, it's gonna e even more increase this uh, AoE uh, potential with the raises, with the Requiem of Souls. Remember the Shadow Raise, if you land all three, that's 900 magic damage in AoE. That's enormous as well. So Requiem of Souls, also a very good damage source if you manage to get it well. And usually with the Tide Hunter setting up with the Ravage 2.75, uh, seconds at level 16 is going to be just enough for you to land a perfect Requiem of Soul and let's go so the game is going <laughs> and 9 grouping up in the middle it looks like they want to get something they are going to go on the tower pings coming up the radiants are here to defend only Naga Siren is not here Queen of Pain is going to get frosted a bit. She's going to get attacked by two shots, but that's pretty much all. Nice Sucker is running around. And this poor Nice Sucker has no wings. So I hope he will get his wing back in a short... In a in a new update very shortly, because... Seeing a Nice Sucker without wings is pretty much like a chicken running around. Blue chicken. So it's pretty sad. He's supposed to be scary. Not ridiculous. So Sentry Ward playing down here. They saw this. It was almost dead anyway. As far as wards goes, we have the Dyers warding up both of the runes. Radiance also warding their top rune, so a lot of defensive wards coming up. Venomancer has to be careful. Oh, he's gonna be okay. So, Bonnie Hunters farming in his jungle. Queen of Pain farming on the top lane. The Nagasaren is farming on her jungle as well, and the Nature Prophet is also farming in the jungle, so everyone's farming. And now, this Night Stalker, it's day again, and there's no ultimate for him, so... Ping's coming in, they say that uh, there's a lot of farm coming up. The lane is pushing, and I must say this first night for Night Stalker, not really efficient at that point. It's, um... Uh, only those two kills and one assist. Two kills get uh, got in the top t in the top lane, pretty much over extension by Bounty Hunter. So anything anyone else than uh, the Nightstalker would have also picked up the Bounty Hunter. So let's take a look. His Pyrrhon Graph is still pretty much even. Go Graph also pretty much even at that point. One K gold advantage, so nothing much. And um, yeah, we see that uh, Queen of Pain, Shatan, those two guys are really getting the farm. So Denied. Queen of uh, the uh, right before, uh, right behind them are the Nagasaren, the uh, Nagasoker, and to a lesser extent, the Nature Prophet. Risk, however, doesn't have a lot, whole lot to his pocket. And well, FZ is still standing around. Here comes the smoke by Titan and Risk. But on the same time, there's the Jakiro behind the tower. The Shrek is actually heading away. That might not be the right, the right timing for him to walk away. Nature Prophet. We have Risk still here. We have Godot going around. Godot is with the Ravage, so... They want to go on the tower. They are going on the tower. Nature Prophet is going to take a huge amount of damage. He's going to fall down. Godot doesn't even need to use his Ravage right here. And they are going to be able to pick off the Nature Prophet for the Prize of the Smoke. Nice Sucker is on the chase. He has the ultimate for 10 more seconds, but he's not going to find anyone. Oh, that is if FZ doesn't run into him. And FZ actually does run into him. He's going to be able to blink away and TP out. And night time's over. His ultimate's over. So with the ultimate over, he's not going to be as scary, and Winter is going to be fine. 
So he's going to go for a BKB as well. So Night Stalker wants to go aggressive, full-time aggressive, going right into the fight with this BKB man up and just fight here. Naga Siren, 3.3k gold, so she might go for a Radiance Rush. Jakiro, the Shrek still roaming around. The Naga Siren Ultimate, uh, the Naga Siren Illusion dealing a good amount of damage to the creeps, getting those uh, creep kills. Queen of Pain going for the ultimate orb, so it might either be a Lincoln Sphere or a fast ship stick. Smoke again by the Dire. Tyranger still has the Ravage, she still hasn't used it. Risk has the smoke as well. It's gonna pop the Shadow Walk. Shadow Fiend is somewhat baiting. So maybe we're gonna see a Nature Prophet falling down again. Risk is coming in. And um, yeah, those trees have been destroyed. So yeah, they're gonna go on Nature Prophet. The track's gonna start first. And Nature Prophet is going to pop the uh, mechanism now. TP coming from everyone. And everyone's trying to run away. Shatan is gonna try to TP. He's not gonna be able to. The uh, Void is gonna deny him this uh, pleasure. And there goes Shatan. But all the others are able to run away during this. So 4 TP on the bottom lane, no, 3 TPs on the bottom lane, 4 people committing, and only 1 kill. In the end, is it gonna be worth it? I'm not really sure. FZ is looking for a kill on this top lane. Miracle has no health uh, items whatsoever, so uh, Queen of Pain might not be able to. Screen of Pain and only 1 level in Sonic Wave, I'm not sure she, she is able to get this kill. Nope, in fact she's just gonna blink away, so she doesn't want to have anything to do with it. Go up, walking around, and uh, Miracle, he has the, uh, he had the Sacred Relic if he wants to buy it. So Sentry Ward here, with his last moments of its life, 14 seconds left until the, the death of this uh, Sentry Ward, but it paid off. He managed to get a, uh, a Sentry, a, a Observer Ward with this. Queen of Pain, are you serious about looking? No. Nope. So in the mid lane, pretty much nothing happening again. And it's a very low amount of kills for a lot of um, killing potential, so I'm really surprised about this. Usually Southeast Asia, a lot more action. Point of Pain here, still dealing damage to the Nagasarian. Nagasarian has to be careful. If she keeps on getting harassed down like this, she will in the end take a blink into Scream into the Sonic Wave and she will fall. In the mid lane, what's happening? Winter's gonna go down to the stuns. Risk is still here. He's gonna track the Night Stalker. Second Knight is soon gonna come up. Still 2-3 minutes. Naga Siren coming back. She has 4k gold. Still doesn't buy, she still doesn't, doesn't buy anything. She's gonna go on Queen of Pain. And yeah, she's even gonna land net on her. In fact, Naga Siren taking a lot of damage. But so does FZ. And haste on the Twin Head Dragon. He might be able to find the Queen of Pain. Oh, he does find the Queen of Pain. The Queen of Pain is gonna blink away. So Ping's coming in. We have Winter coming back in the middle lane. Go out is all here. Farm farm wise, 115 crit kills for the Shadow Fiend. He's he's 100 gold away from his BKB. Miracle. Miracle, are you gonna get this item? Yes or no? Uh, finally. So he finally gets this uh, Sacred Relic. Looking for Radiance. Nightstalker is also very close to his BKB. At this point he still needs like one... He still needs uh, something like 300 gold I think. Yeah, 400 gold maybe. Gotta get harassed a bit by uh, Tidehunter, but uh, not gonna mind. There, Jakiro managed to get a Gem of True Sight. They want to keep the map control. The Shrek also managed to get the Power Trees as well as Bracer, so he's a bit more tanky than before. And now the Knights come, and he uses the Darkness to extend it. So Central Ward Pendulum. P is still farming up. He managed to get the Power Trees. So nothing really new for him. Miracle. This tower is still standing. Winter managed to bet the Medallion Corch, and they're looking for 
this uh, kill on Roshan. And with the m amount of minus armor, they might be able to. This is minus 6. This is minus, uh, minus uh, 3 as well. And with the uh, gush, it's going to be another minus 3. In fact, Godot is not even going to use it. See how fast Roshan melts. And Shatan is going to be able to pick it up. There we go. Shadowkin has it. And that is a very, very good way to come back in this game. So we see peeking up and down and peeking up and down again. And now N9, they want this middle lane tower. Ice Pass middle lane. Risk taking a good amount of damage. Risk, in fact, Stark, Night Stalker is gonna run into him. But <laughs> Shatan is just eating through the uh, life of the uh, Night Stalker. And now, Jakiro overstaying his welcome. So is Luby. Luby, what are we doing here? He's gonna get. Oh, nope, he's gonna dodge the Gale. Oh, enormous winter! This is genius play. Plague Ward blocking the path of the Lishrak, forcing him to run back. And this is three kills for the price of a bounty hunter. They did manage to pick up the bounty hunter in the end, but was it worth it? One tower plus three death. Miracle, miracle, miracle. You, I know you have the radiance, but ah, uh, they want to get Shatan. He want to get Shatan. He's not gonna go on Shatan. Okay, I guess. Uh, all right. So miracle wants to TP away now. And has to be careful, he doesn't want to run into risk. Oh, he's even going to pop the uh, ultimate just for safety reasons. So, nice stalker. He has the BKB, but as we saw the last time, he thought the, the BKB would save him, but... But, uh, well, too much damage coming from the Shadow Fiend. It's uh, 180 damage per swing, and not to mention the minus 5 armor. Oh, uh, there's a sentry ward. I think they're gonna be able to see him. Though sentry ward by itself has very low vision range, but... Nope, they're gonna get revealed. They're just standing around. They are gonna get this tower. Pretty much uncontested. In the meantime, Nagasarin's farming. Which is what Nagasarin does when she gets a Radiance. Just farm, 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 farm. Go anti-mage style. Farm up entire lanes, entire jungles. And then get some big items like a Heart of Tara asking to mental stall or anything like this. And then carry the game late game. So nice soccer. Still running around with the BKB. 1k gold in the bank now. Same with Nature Prophet. 2.8k gold. So he might go for a sheep stick if he wants to. He's still 200, uh, like 300, 3000 gold away from it. Nice soccer. Sees the uh, bounty hunter. He has the sentry ward here. He also sees the entire N9 side, but too late. There's the sheep stick, and there's the nice soccer going down immediately. And Jakiro, Jakiro is trying to run away, but N9 is on the chase, and they will get those two kills. They wanted those two kills, they got those two kills. Shatan did use the BKB though. Winter is gonna TP away. Observer wards drop somewhere with the number of pings, so Tyranter might have picked that up. Tyranter is going for the mechanism, I guess, with the butler. And Bounty Hunter is going for the uh, the Dream of Endurance. FZ, very fast ship seek, really took the uh, Night Stalker by surprise. The worst part is Night Stalker could see them with the Sentry Ward, but I'm not sure he knew that there was a uh, sheep stick in the, in the play. So blink into sheep and absolutely demolishing the poor uh, Night Stalker. And well, the Glyph is popping. Nagasarin's here as well. Nagasarin. Nagasarin's gonna get sheeped. And now Nagasarin's just coming in. Silence on the wrong hero. And now Nagasarin is... Ugh! She's gonna pop the ultimate, but she's gonna die instantly due to the poison. And Luby, very good stunt here. Shatan is in a lot of trouble. Shatan's gonna fall. Shatan has the Aegis though. So now it's gonna be Nagasarin falling down. Risk is still alive and pretty much healthy. No, he's... 400... Yeah, 400 health. And now mechanism did got delivered to the hunter, the high hunter. In the meantime, nature prophet doing what he does best, split pushing, and being a dick. Shatan is here. He's farming up as well. He has the um, 
He has the Mentis style if he wants to. So Winter here with this Medal and Porch, go up. The mechanism really, really good. Risk has the Drum of Endurance if he wants. And FZ, what is what is he looking at right now? So for Do joining, it's N9 versus First Departure. First Departure, uh, it's he. They're the winner of the Singapore qualifier. Wait, I'm gonna check that again because every time I say this, I'm getting it wrong. So, yeah, they're the uh, winner of the Singapore qualifier. So. First departure against N9. N9 is the uh, the old name of the uh, Absolute Legend team. If you remember, Godot, Shatan, all of these guys. And um, what else to say? Yeah, um, also I'm not the uh, official caster of Dodo Talk Show. Uh, the uh, Dodo Talk normally is casted by uh, Mout. And uh, this time Mout is uh, casting on his Neo Dota channel. So. I'm replacing him here. My name is Mizrim, as you can see in the uh, small corner, the little icon here. And I'm a pretty new caster. I I usually only do cast on um, YouTube's on uh, replays. So enough with me, enough with those um, little uh, recap. And back to the game, 26 minutes in. Experience graph, 7.5k now, and 4k gold in the adventures for the uh, dire side. Those last few fights really, really favoring the, the dire, and uh, the Naga Siren, even with this Radiance right now, not being as efficient as she can. Uh, in the last fight, she just got picked off immediately by the Queen of Pain as well as the Tide Hunter. She does need a uh, bit of um, HP items right now. She's going to go for the Mentis style instead. Mentis style does give a bit of HP due to the Ultimate Orb, but. We saw some uh, Nagasaren going straight for the uh, Heart of Tarask after the Radiance, and this is not the case. So, smoke coming up for the uh, Dire side, and they are running into a Sentry Ward, so everyone knows. Uh, but they know, but he cannot run fast enough. And goodbye, Nature Pro. Again! Again, Winter! Whoa, Nature, you. Winter, Winter, you sexy beast. Plague Wards everywhere in the choke points to make sure that they can't run away for sure. That is such good play. This first little ward here, and then the ward, little ward here. It might seem very obvious. It might seem like, uh, yeah, duh, everyone does this, but it's very hard to find the the right one. And Nasoker, he's gonna thank the god he had a invisibility rune in this bottle. So, pings coming up. They are telling the Nagasarin to push in the meantime because the radiant, the dar are pushing the bottom tower. And uh, with Night Soccer so far in, I think they're not gonna try to defend it. Uh, the, and <laughs> the tower just falls so quickly. They're not gonna be able to defend it. So they know that there's a radi they, uh, they know that there's a dire uh, observer ward here, but they're afraid of uh, doing anything against it. They might be picked off by the retreating heroes. They know that the Shadow Fiend on the top, but there are still four heroes. And you see already the uh, the the um, line drawn here. They say, okay, so they're gonna back in this way. So be careful, nice sucker. Be careful, Naga Siren. Thanks. Nice sucker at this point not really being being a, a huge issue in this game, and Venomous are going for the four staff, I guess. Godot at this point he's maybe looking for a a pipe. So pings coming in everywhere. Nice sucker is tipping it out, and same for Naga Siren. She's scared away. She's gonna TP out as well. He is trying to farm so 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 badly, but he isn't meeting the co he isn't uh, you know meeting his quota right now. So he does almost have the um, the sheep stick. Steals nine hundred gold away. Um. So this is game five of the uh, of the group stages. For those who don't know. Group five of the groups, uh, so game five of the group stages. There's, there's one more game after this, and I think after this is gonna be over for today at least. Now we have Miracle with the Mentor style as well. Jakiro still has the uh, the Gem of True Sight. 
Nice Tucker running around with pretty much nothing new. Lashrak is getting a cloak to avoid getting killed instantly. And Nature Prophet is hiding. He's afraid of getting ganked again. They are looking for the uh, next Roshan, and next Roshan is going to pop in a few seconds. Shatan with the Manta style was the BKB and the Ring of Killa. Winter is here as well. And Godot is tanking up. Risk. A lot of damage coming up on Roshan. He's sitting at minus 13 armor. Just see how fast he falls. Yep, there we go. BKB is uh, going up on the Ogre Claw. Uh, BKB is going up on Bounty Hunter. TP. Shatan. <laughs> Ah, uh, well, we can use this song, but he has a BKB, so... BKB right before the song happened, making sure that he doesn't get uh, sleep, and taking the kill on this Nagasaren with the help of the uh, Queen of Pain. Queen of Pain now also has a BKB, so... Haven't even used it yet. Still a 10 second duration. At that point, I think if the Nagasaren pops asleep, she's still gonna go down to uh, the uh, combined power of Shadowfiend and the Queen of Pain. Because she didn't go for any servability items such as the you know the the uh, the hurt of the rask or well she did go for the mental style so I guess she does tank a little bit more than uh, oh and again nice sucker gonna get caught slow is coming in one slow two slow BKB popped he's trying to run away and BKB doesn't dispel venomous scale if you're wondering so the venomancer is one of those very good heroes that can keep the uh, melee heroes slow to a crawl even if they have BKB. Shatan right now, 250 damage per, sw per swing. He has the Eagle Song, so he might go for the uh, Butterfly very soon. And now they're gonna go on Shatan. Shatan taking a lot of damage. Illusion popped by the Nagashirin. She's gonna send them one by one to deal the damage, the burn damage of the Radiance. It's not gonna do a whole lot though. And in the meantime, Nature Prophet, he has the Sheep Stick. He is pu slight, uh, side pushing as much as he can. He isn't sure that he can take the fight here, 5v5, so instead instead of waiting here and doing nothing, he's just pushing it. He might want to come back. Oh, Nagasaren is going to get sheeped. She's going to get killed before the sleep happened. She is going to fall, and that is a lot of DPS that disappears right now, and the tower is going to go down. Nature Prophet is here, but there's no DPS coming from this uh, Radiant side. Sh Shatan is low on health, but he, he, heck, he has the Aegis of Immortal. He doesn't care. And now, even going against the backdoor protection, they are out damaging the backdoor protection. Stun happening, landing on two, and now the tower, the, uh, the rack is gonna fall. The range rack is also under a lot of pressure. The range rack is also gonna fall as well. They, they're not gonna be able to rotate on the uh, other sides. Well, they could rotate on the bottom, but I'm not really sure they want to. They are gonna go back, and right now, Shadowfiend still has something like four, se four minutes of uh, Aegis. Remember that with the 6.75 patch, uh, Aegis only lasts 6 minutes instead of 10 minutes. R Roshan still takes 10 minutes to respawn. But, oh, Shatan is going to be so happy. Just getting a regeneration rune, and now they're just going to go and look for this bottom tower. Approach you. In this fight, in this fight, Gara didn't even use the Ravage. And, and FZ didn't even use the Sonic Wave. So much damage. Not even counting those things. So even using a healing salve at this point into the game, 33 minutes into the game, you're using healing salve. This is because you want to make sure that you are full health, full mana, full everything when you're going to go on this bottom tower. And they're going to go on it. In fact, um, there's no reason why they shouldn't. So starting to pound on the tower, Nagasarin is going to send her illusion one by one again. And uh, whoop, there goes the first illusion. The second illusion is going to come in, and uh, it's going to fall. Shatan is going to get frost. Nothing much happening. Nagasaren coming with the third illusion, and that's the third illusion going down. No more illusion for Nagasaren for 30 seconds. Oh, uh, she still has one, has some with the uh, Mental Style. So, fourth illusion, and now the fifth illusion coming in. Really, really being a pain. And in fact, Queen of Pain used the Sight of Vice on the illusion, so... It was worth it in the end. I can't believe how long they are delaying them with those illusions. Nagasarin just being so much of a pain, sending one illusion one after uh, one after a time, and 
and using a Riptide to deal some damage, reducing the armor, burning up everyone with the uh, with the uh, Radiance, and also preventing the creep from pushing. So they're still gonna go on this tower, pounding on the tower. Tower is almost down. Stun on Shatan, and now BKB is popped on Queen of Pain, and all the ultimates are landing. The Night Stalker is going down on the uh, Tyranter. And Silence going down on the uh, on the Shadow Fiend. Shadow Fiend is going to use the ultimate, and National Go taking a lot of damage. He's going to pop with the Aegis, and with the uh, ultimate, the Ravage, they're going to be able to catch one more. And first departure on the uh, Lestrag is going to fall. Nature Prophet is forced back, and now they're going to take the second set of relics. Or are they? Yes, they are. No buyback on anyone on the Radiant team. That is... Oh, P is gonna get caught. And that... They are getting picked up one by one. And here comes the ping. They want to go for the GG right now. No delay. No... They don't want to take any chances. They know they have this in the bag. And they're gonna go on it. Go dot lone mana, but... Winter... No, Winter actually doesn't have mana boots. No one has mana boots, actually. Oh, yeah. Only Tidehunter have it. So, Shatan... 6k gold in the bank, 6.4k gold. God damn it, this is this is a farm dot Tradofine. And this is gonna be GG. So at this point, N9 showing that uh, they're still a very strong team and uh, have to be careful about this. FZ is coming in with the uh, BKB and Sleep is gonna land. FZ is the only one still uh, still uh, awake and he's, he's gonna fall in the end. But Chet, Shatan also caught in the middle of nowhere. He managed to buy the butterfly, and he's gonna fall as well. <laughs> in fact, they might even be able to defend this last wave. Oh, the radiant, the radiant entrance. 300 HP, 300 HP, 280 HP. Those little plague wars dealing so much damage. Godot is still trying to delay them as much as possible, and well. They managed to defend this one, so... <laughs> First departure, delaying the uh, GG by a few seconds. Well, I mean a few minutes. They still have to walk around. Queen of Pain <laughs> getting Maelstrom, what the hell? <laughs> okay, at this point it's just like trolling. Bounty Hunter getting Bounty, uh, bounty getting a uh, Senjin Yasha. Yeah, screw the... Yeah, that's right. Screw BKB. Get Senjin Yasha. Winter. I'm surprised he didn't go for a troll build as well. And Shadow Fiend with the Butterfly, the Helm of Dominator, Blacking Bar, with an Invisibility Rune on the Night Soccer. So Night Soccer now has the Egg and Imceptor. He's going to be able to spot a lot around him. But I'm not sure it's going to be <laughs> helping a lot right now. And... Now coming up is Godot. Godot has a bling dagger. Roshan is still in three minutes, so they're gonna. Oh no, they're just gonna use a smoke, aggressive smoke. They wanna find someone. These are Naga illusions. Those are not real, not real heroes. These are Naga illusions as well, and they really wanna find someone. Or actually, they're just gonna go for the GG. They're, they're heading into the radiance. And well, it's gonna be a nice sucker with the invisibility rune spotting everyone and now blink into a a ravage. So Nature Prophet's gonna take a lot of damage. The ultimate coming up from FZ and now now sleep of the Daga Siren is gonna delay everything a bit, but I'm not really sure it's gonna matter. There we go, they're all attacking the Radiance Ancient, and now a few more clip kills, few more clicks, and there we go. GG, well played. N9 winning this one against First Departure. Next game is gonna be soon up, guys. Or actually, I'm not sure. I think round 6 is in one hour time. So I'm gonna update the information on the stream. See you guys.